very, very high pressure game that yeah. uh, G2 or, and teams like G2 and Cloud9 play, the, Sonic, the Sonics have trouble finding those clears and getting their way out. Now, Flight, they've just had offensive struggles all season. They do start right. on defense to clear this ball out. But if they can find a way to get that consistent pressure, and that's a good shot, but saved by Sathu and Shock, a quick follow up to start it off. Maybe the Flight, maybe Flight have some gumption in this series, but we'll see. And even in the series that we saw earlier from from Sonics, the first two games were, were were out of this world. They were playing fantastic. They had the typical pace. The defense was great. The saves were there. The communication. And then all of a sudden, once they started losing a lot of that momentum in Game Five with that substitute, they were double committing everywhere. And I think the communication completely broke down. So for Sonics, if they can just get back to with that that calm mentality, I think they've got this one set. Right now, shocks up for the ball, but Seabass will punt it away. And Flight, you know, Seabass has had times this season where he's just looked on point, sometimes Definitely. carrying the ball the length of the field himself, winning a lot of 50s. Right now it's Sonics, though. Look how they approach. Sathu, he loves going up that corner. I saw him do it several times in the series against Cloud9, trying to take it off the corner off the ceiling. He hasn't really found too much success doing that yet. And, and Sathu, if he can start finding those passes, on the off attacking corner, Sonics could be really deadly, but Flight are able to get back to the blue half of the field. It's Shock. He will take it over to Shock, running in oh, for the beautiful. MVP. He hits it off the post. No good. So that whole progression, beautiful, but no goal to cap it off. Shock, I love the dribbling, the idea of that. I mean, even in the, in the initial series earlier, we saw that from Sathu a lot of the time. And some great videos here. Sathu will get with the double touch. He almost had it. There's so many chances going their way, they just can't find the finishing shot. Now it's a quick turnaround for Rapid. They were catching Sonics on the transition, but Rapid couldn't get a solid pass out towards the center on his carry. Now he's forced back to his own corner. Rapid with a little bit of boost in the tank. Memory coming in to try to help it, but Flight still on defense here. And Sonics are just waiting in midfield. Here's Sathu. Seabass actually wins a Good crucial speed. touch back over to Rapid, but it's off the crossbar in a way. That's two for Flight that get immediately knocked away, but that was their best chance on net so far. And it all stemmed from that speed you were talking about earlier, Jorby, where it's just flat out aggression. I think Johnny Boy mentioned it during his cast as well, that Cloud9, they weren't hesitating to use that boost. They weren't hesitating to jump in front of the faces of Sonics, spam their boost, and be as quick paced to the ball as possible. So that could be definitely a huge disadvantage when it comes to Sonic's game and how slow they are to get out of the defensive side. Look at Flight right now, their rotation, very, very aggressive. They have control of the midfield boost. They have these passes forcing double commit onto Sonics, but Sonics do get this clear, but it's still Flight. Oh, Dapper, if he wins enough 50s, it'll just be Sonics. Flight handle business, and they do get back to the blue half of the field, Sathu. Trying to find Dapper. Sonics are really struggling to find consistent possession, consistent solid touches right now. Shock with a little bit of boost. Made do with what he could. Sathu got to free look at the third, and it's saved by memory. Just getting up in time. Dapper buying some time for Sonics to get reset. Sathu on the challenge in the third. Sonic starting to close down flight in the orange half, but an expected touch from Rapid will send the Sonics back to their own half. Dangerous positioning on the defensive side. Lots of space given to Sonics. Thankfully, Sathu, if you're a Sonic or if you're a Flight fan, he didn't find that shot. But there has been a lot more open up space for Sonics, I think, once they can force that defense. But right now, we're seeing, you know, the, the typical Sonics defensive style where they kind of push back a lot. They're really okay with just, you know, saving a lot of these mediocre shots and dealing with pressure in that way and just waiting to challenge, you know, the, the perfect on target angled shots that, that really come towards their net. They're, they're totally calm, calm and, you know, not really panicking too much, which is a great sign because in that game five we just saw, they were all over the place. Yeah, they've been managing their half fairly well, like you said, limiting the amount of quality opportunities Flight has had and content to save these mediocre shots, but that also puts you in a tough spot to where you have to have pretty much perfect control of your back boosts. Yeah, Otherwise, you're gonna, you're gonna have trouble. Mediocre shots all of a sudden become quality shots, but shock one more touch towards the net. It's off the crossbar. Sathu 
The 50 up top for Dapper. He already has the read. It's straight in front. It'll be cleared away by Memory. Rapid's already downfield. Rapid, one touch, and Memory was maybe expecting a second touch, and he's forced back. He has no boost. He does play it out to the corner. Damage control is good enough. Memory still on the carry. He has to get it by three Sonic's attackers. He's got some help from Rapid. Rapid, he wants to play it. One man to beat. It's Dapper, but it's too high. It may drop for overtime. Shock wants to play it. That could be dangerous. Oh, maybe. A dangerous touch from Shock. This keeps the ball down. in the air for flight. There it goes, overtime. Flight looking so, solid. Flight. Yeah. I mean, the possession for them towards the end of that, that initial game. Now, we, as we go into overtime, I think they've got a lot of momentum to build on here. And the speed, Jorby, is on point. Yeah, Seabass had a really good read to get that out. But Sonics, again, they're not really... Sonics aren't, aren't exactly an aggressive team. They are content to sit in midfield. Even when they're on offense, yeah. they have control. Their positioning is usually good enough. And that's why you see them lose in the shot differential more times than not. But the difference is the, the efficiency of their chances that they take. But I yeah. mean, flight of control, this overtime, that was a quick pass taken away by Shock. Seabass around the corner, and it will be thrown up downfield is shock the pass from oh, that's Sapu. It? shock hit, hit a solid touch it was wide he had a lot of net to look at he just couldn't find the target dapper tried that's... to flip it over but memory right on top of the turtle that was actually the third demo i think i've seen where somebody from sonics is killing the last man back that third man who's waiting for the cleanup shot and that opens up so much space for then somebody from sonics to carry the ball out so great defensive demos from them, which we don't see a lot. Defensive demos, when you're rotating back, you rarely see that. It's normally the offensive side where you can be aggressive, but Sonics, they're implementing a little bit of a different style rotation and trying to force some some different aggression onto flight. The idea from Dapper there to get that quick touch and pop it out towards the middle, I like the idea. Sonics weren't ready for it. They're back on defense. Flight, rapid, he gets under another oh. rapid, almost does it himself, but Sonics, Shock got in the way just in time. Shock throws this way. He's almost picked off by Rapid. Safi right behind him has the clear. Sonics surviving game one overtime against Flight. Cannot find any room to work with on offense. Oh, there's space. That could that be it. That shot's good. Seabass will score and Flight take the first game against Sonics. We were waiting. We saw the opportunities, these shots, and the speed. We have been talking about it all game. Seabass, he is so fast in the air. And this is finally an opportunity, I think, where we see Flight take advantage of Seabass, his individual skill, and throw him up towards the aggressive side of the pitch. Something beautiful. We've been waiting for it to connect. Flight finally looking strong here off of uh, tilted Sonics that we saw earlier on today. It didn't, it didn't directly convert to a goal, but Rapids carry down the field where he won two touches, got it on the back wall, almost scored, forcing yeah. Sonics to, to die for the ball. It was shock. And then from there, Flight just had so much pressure and it was relentless. Yeah. And then he, again, it was what, 11 shots? Yeah, 11 shots on for Flight, but it was 11 for Sonics. Sonics had offense at times oh, in yeah. that series, but they beat on the, they were getting beat on transition and they were losing on the pitch. Flight took control of this game and put a lot of quality opportunities. They forced Sonics to stretch their own back wall several times, yeah. use a lot of boost. So while it didn't directly translate into a into like a 20 shot game for flight, they still put up 10, a 10 plus shot game and got themselves a win. This yeah. last week, we saw flight and they looked a little better. I think they look even better this week. I mean, they've just been definitely improving as the season has gone on. But I feel like it's such an interesting topic is the Sonic's play style and, and this passive uh, uh, rotation where you wait for a lot of shots and, and you're totally fine with making a lot of saves and difficult reads off the backboard so long as it isn't too threatening. And in situations like this, like you said, Jorby, mediocre shots can turn into fantastic opportunities and shots on net if you're given the right space and you can starve your opponent. So it's almost a matter of just time and waiting if you're flight. The flights, a struggle all season to find their way, find yeah. their philosophy here in the RLCS. But they start on offense with a great pass from Rapid. Memory had to wrap around the ball. It would only keep it locked in the blue half, but it's a good read from Seabass. Flight are just locking down these angles. They're, they're reading the flow of the game so well, especially on offense, and aggressive too on these challenges. Rapid, he just destroyed two Sonic's defenders, and that makes clearing the ball out so much more difficult. 
for Sonics when you have one player who's so disruptive on the offensive half of the field. And he's doing a great job here even maintaining all his boosts so efficient with when he uses his boost, when he feathers it. And that's how he can keep challenging forward, keep the pos uh, possession on, and then starve out while taking those corner boosts, and then wait for just one simple mistake from Sonics to just explode. And Shot got chipped by memory, and so as he was approaching that challenge, he was slowed down and couldn't win that challenge. It was the difference for Flight to get that ball cleared out. Flight are back on offense. Sonic still feeling the, the real from that game five against Cloud9. Another shot right in the shock. This time saved. Rapid. Just keeping oh, the ball touch. away from Sonics. Dapper right in front. We'll turn it around here for Sonics. Can they find a goal? Dapper under one. It's gonna bounce up. Rapid and Memory both commit. Shot is good for Shock. Punished. And Sonics finally have a goal. Communication playing a vital role here in the mistake. We saw a great 50 from Dapper, but then the double commit memory and rapid both in the same situation, same ball. Somebody's got to stay on the ground. You'd expect somebody on the backboard to maybe have a solid hit, but instead memory kind of went for a weird air dribble touch. And then you see Sonics, they're just able to capitalize off of that mistake. So a good job of, you know, maintaining strong defense so that they could finally go on offense and make a mistake happen. I mean, for rapid in that situation, the ball's over your head. If you have memory right behind you, like, like you said, communication. Someone's got to call that off. Memory yeah. almost hopped in front for that dunk. Up in front, Safi back over to Dapper. Shock, excuse me, it's Shock, Shock. Trying to work towards the box. Rapid will take it away. Flight, despite giving up that goal, really it's the only real error that has cost Flight in this series so far. And they still have control. But the thing about the, thing about the Susquehanna Sonics is they don't, you're not gonna expect them to have relentless pressure. They're going to score when they get the ball. They've been so efficient this season, but Flight, we'll see if they can keep the pressure up because if there's anything that we know about this Sonics defense is that you have to put on a lot of shots to get through. Oh, them. so much, yeah. And I mean, I was even talking to Dapper about it personally, and he, he just said he, he really doesn't see an issue with, with the shot differential, personally. He said he doesn't mind letting, you know, all these weak shots go on net so long as it can create a better counterattack opportunity. So I think it's gonna come down a lot to these goal line saves and the ability for anybody on Sonics to get in front of the ball and make even a, a top corner shot save, anything like that. There were incredible saves oh. that came out from Dapper actually against Cloud9. And for that entire time, just Flight's positioning in midfield was so solid. They really prevented any kind of transition for Sonics and they had a couple of them, but it's it's third, a good third man from all three Flight players right now trying to get a game time goal yeah quick transition there's a shot shock has it blocked still seabass rolling around taken away by dapper rapid cuts off the pass back over to shock zathu has to handle this now for sonics rapid another one he's got no boost tease it up for memory memory wants rapid but rapid had to leave he had no boost even if he recovered there i'm not sure he would have had a solid shot on net it is that dominus though he's got point on the ball here Back into the middle, and Flight can't really seem to get a play going just yet. Memory sends that towards the box, but all Seabass can do is send it back over to the corner. This ball is just moving so slowly. I feel like everything is coming down to these corner positions. I think a uh, Flight, a big tactic of theirs is to toss this ball into the corner and force some kind of weird bounce or maybe a mistake out of Sonics. But it's not happening now if they, if they, as they seem to have warmed up after that first initial game. No mistakes out, and here's Dapper with a great cool. air dribble across the field, almost got one. The Rapid had to be careful there. If he if he jumps up a little too high early, he ends up killing the ball and neutralizes it, which would have been a chance for Sonics who were pushing down the field. Instead, he got right under it, so it hit off the top of his car and was able to take it away from Sonics. So Rapid, Ooh. good on defense. The quick shot turned away. Sonics are feeling a little jumpy on defense. There's been a couple of yeah. double commits. That time, everyone did. And another log clear. Dapper's there. He got the touch, but Rapid again. Cutting off these potential passes that turn into shots. There's another one blocked by Seabass. It's a loose ball in front. Flight, last chance down the field. Seabass flips it over one, taken away by Dapper in the corner. Time expiring to zero. Flight, do they have another? Oh, they can it's do a catch it. And a pop by Seabass, and the shot won't be good. Sonics tie the series. Rapid almost had that initial shot. He just smacked it into the ground. I'm not sure if there was space from his angle to keep the ball in the air when going for that buzzer beater. Flight looking deadly in the final second. Sonics, they barely managed to hold on. 
and what we talked about earlier, I mean, there was a, a last second save across the net from Sonic that they just rely on. And the issue with this is sometimes whenever they, they are forced to go over these saves, it's so much easier to double commit because you can panic a lot when you see an initial ball that gets towards your net. So communication always has to be on point. And that first goal from Sonic was a classic, you know, just punishing goal where you see a mistake come out where nobody could get the touch. Yeah, and again, in that, in that situation, if you have a teammate back post and it's over your head, you know, yeah. Rapid probably probably thinking he can pop that up, maybe catch on, on the backboard, or maybe he can just pop it up for Memory to do it. But by the time Memory jumps for it, it's too late, no matter what Rapid does with the ball. Yeah, it, definitely. You're, you're in a tough spot yeah. if you're Flight. So it's it's yeah. just one mistake can be, can be the difference, Turtle. Even though Flight have done a good job controlling this game, uh, you know, Dapper had four saves. Uh, Shock had two, Sathu had one. So when when the defense is this good consistently from Sonics, you know, uh, all that pressure just doesn't mean anything. Yeah, I mean, the shots just have to be better. That is the difference maker with Flight right now. If you're gonna put on uh, on any opportunities or any attacks, you cannot just go for basic shots. So even in their situation where the, the typical Rocket League uh, trend is to just keep throwing shots at the net and hope you can get a mistake. I think Flight should, instead of just trying to throw everything there, try and control the ball, take it infield, look for a better opportunity in that instance. It might decrease your amount of overall shots, but against this defense from Sonics, you're gonna need to switch it up. Oh, Seabass wanted that double touch or the double tap and just couldn't find it, a really tight angle. And Seabass has been a flashy player at times, yeah. but it's been tough for him to find space to do what he can do. And even, even though Flight have controlled, the game sonics have also done a good job of not giving flight too much space there's some good transitions from flight and that gives them one or two solid opportunities but other than that sonics they're quick to the ball Definitely. and they're not completely losing the boost battle which may be the difference for flight if, if they can't secure these back boosts these back blue boosts they probably will never find the back of the net again against sonics but they are putting on some more pressure Dapper coming up with another save. He'll move by Rapid. Try to Good win 50s. the 50 against Memory, and he does. Shock gonna take control now. Off the backboard, looking, and Dapper will actually wrap it around Seabass, but the rest of Sonic's gonna wait in midfield for this. Seabass, the touch from Rapid. Nothing just yet. So Sonic's, it's been a surprising season. Ripping five straight games after taking NRG to five games in week one of the season. A shock has been a big reason for that in the running for MVP. And he hasn't really, he's only had one goal so far. It's been tough for him to make headway, but uh, something that I've been mentioning a couple of times is I'm just impressed by Dapper. Dapper's return to the RLCS. He has been such a yeah. quality, quality addition to, to Sonics and He's a big reason why they're doing as well as they are, but Sonics get away with one. Wait, no, they don't! And Dapper can't get the save, so Rapid will punish Sonics too far off. I thought Dapper might have been able to make another incredible save here off the backward shock. Read the bounce horribly, it rolled out and just caught that lip of the, of the corner of the stadium where it just stays on the ground. Shock had no idea what was gonna happen with the bounce. Dapper rolled across the net, almost got an insane save yet again. But finally, we've got Flight on the board after some pressure. The Rapids always gonna be downfield, looking for those passes. He loves to play that aggressive game. Yeah. If it's not bumps and demos, he's at least gonna try to make a 50 happen to keep pushing forward. That's up high off the back wall, a miss from Seabass, but Rapid will pick it up. Rapid again, downfield, picked off by Dapper. Here's Shock off the ceiling, carrying down Sonics. Another potential shot, and it saves again. Sonics, a couple opportunities, and Flight moved back down the pitch. And that was a really good idea from Shock there with the initial ground pitch. He actually didn't try to force it towards the net. He kind of um, tried to give it some air, get it to bounce up a little bit, set up his teammates. Just shows you how selfless a lot of these players are. Here he is again, off the backboard, going for a little sneaky air dribble. Some good ideas from Sonics, but so far, defense from Flight. This is probably the best we've seen so far from him. No communication errors whatsoever. Well, Dapper pulling off. He has to give room for Sathu now. Uh, some time for Flight to get to that challenge. And now Rapid in front loses to Dapper. The shot in for Shock, and he will find the tying goal. That's two for Shock in the series. 
Dapper's getting, he's been getting physical this whole season, really. He gets a nice win there and then challenges Seabass, a routine play for him as the passer to go for those demos. You know, it's one thing to be the, the guy who's always assisting, but then to do even more than that once you can get that initial pop out, it helps so much with the team, the rotation, and also the opportunity that you're opening up. Dapper, a really good uh, an initial play from him as they get the first one here. And that's been, that's been part of Sonic's story. It's okay. Dapper to shock. It is a dynamic it's a duo, duo. Yeah. To, say, to say the least. Shock just seems to always be there for the clutch factor for Sonics, but now they're in trouble. Shock got back down to it on the 50. Dapper gets there just in time for the challenge against Rapid. Now Safi racing across. Sonics feeling comfortable on defense. Rapid ends up sending it forward. Seabass behind him. Rapid will opt for the boost steal. The ball just got away from Shock. Now Shock having to wrap back around memory, trying to buy time, and the oh, no, defense is just, there's a giant gash in it, and the Sonics will punish. And I don't think you can really blame Flight too much about that overaggression, but it was that touch as that third man back. He got nothing on that hit whatsoever. That's what opened up all the space. You were hoping to see kind of some sort of stall hit, give your teammates some time to get back, get some boost. But well, you know, you've got a minute left, Zorpy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think they're trying to get a little bit too aggressive here. Yeah, he, memory, as soon as there were two players he had to avoid to get, get to that ball, like, it's already too late. And Rapid yeah. was just by midfield by the time the ball was in Sonic's hands. So, you know, a little bit too risky on the challenge from memory, and it didn't initially start like that. And memory was kind of in a position where it's, you know, well, I'm screwed if I do or don't here. Yeah, it's all or nothing at that point. Memory trying to make up for it, and it bounces straight back. Shock and Seabass on the challenge. It'll be Seabass on the win. Memory, first touch. Double. He's got another one. Rapid close there. He can't find it. It's blocked. Sonics, they just have to survive the next 17 seconds. There's a win from Shock that'll kill more time off the clock. Up quickly for it is Dapper. Next man up, it's Sathew. He wins it clean off the ceiling. Does he have another touch? No, Seabass clears it out, but it's not good enough. Shock takes another one, and it's blocked. That was a great save from Memory. But you need a goal to win this game. And Sonic, oh, they have to stop. Sathew, oh, what a great clear from Sathew. Memory has the catch. But Dapper hops in front of him. And Sonics will win game three. And it's interesting, Jorby. I mean, you talked about it earlier that Sonics, you know, they have the dynamic duo of Dapper and Shock. And I think that that is an element that is missing from Flight. I think over this entire season so far from Flight, They've all individually, each player, Rapid Seabass Memory, they've had respective games of their own where I think they popped off. Towards the beginning of the season, I thought we saw Seabass do really fantastic. And then, you know, as things progressed, Rapid started picking the pace up a bit. And then Memory last weekend, whenever they got their first win, that he was basically doing all the heavy lifting. But it's whenever you connect all those pieces, find out individually what play style works best for you and then utilize it. And you're gonna get caught off guard a lot if you, if you fail to put the puzzles together. To get put the pieces together excuse me and for sonics that's exactly what they did they punished them they found the open nets and there was so much space left on defense and i think that you know, for flight there, there's still a lot of things to like in this series you're not out of this uh, by any stretch rapid especially has been all over the field yeah. in this series he's been winning 50s trying to put his team in, in positions to either either score or open up some space like he's done a lot yeah. of that uh and again it, that play from Dapper, where he gets that initial pass, got the bump onto Seabass. That's Huge. the difference with this Sonics team. That's the difference that Dapper makes now in his return to the RLCS. So uh, for Flight, this is, the story just kind of keeps writing itself for Flight. We haven't really taken a twist for this team. They just can't seem to finish series. At times they look so good, but then when it comes to finishing series, finishing games, they just continually struggle. Can they do it here? Can they fight for a game five? Sonic's looking to recover after their game five loss against Cloud9. Yeah, and I think while it may sound scummy, I mean, Sonic's going into this, they were already a little bit tilted because you know, you lost a Fireburner, the coach who subbed in. I think you try and, and play off that advantage and go for some demos and constantly try and throw them off even more. Just get in their faces against Sonics because you have to throw them out of their game and make them panic just like Cloud9 did. That's a good win from Shock. He got a second tap. He got a bump as well, but <laughs> an easy pull shot back pass. Back over to Dapper. 
That's a quick pass over to Memory, broken up by Shock. Dapper on the turnaround. Shot on net. Taken away by Seabass. Sonics. Well, the, the little demo. touch got away from Shock, and then, like you said, the demo. And then Dapper buying a little bit of time for Sonics, but Seabass on the dribble. Opted to go in front to try to force it through. And Dapper has the clear again for Sonics. A flight. Just trying to kick it away from Sonic's attack. But it's so tough when they will have the corners locked down like this. We saw this in the previous games. The, the, the bump by Ooh. Dapper gave Shock a chance at the net. And despite there still being two defenders in net, Shock going for that long far post shot. He just hit the post. Oh, but Rapid there. Memory had a great challenge to put the ball forward. Rapid, a little bit of a tight window. Could have sealed it. Maybe go for a pass that he just bangs into the corner. Well, I think Flight have good possession. Sometimes I feel like they just kind of toss it a bit into that into that spot. But here's a great chance, almost off the crossbar. Oh, still you wide. Score this. <sighs> that that was it. That was the one. That was two. There was two chances. The first one, missing off the crossbar, and then Rapid. It's it's crossbar city for Flight. It's not the it's not the only two times they've hit the crossbar in this series. Downfield Seabass. He's cut off by Sathew. And you just, it's gotta be deflating, Turtle. When you, when you get these transition opportunities yeah. down the field, it's like you did everything right and you're feeling good and then you just missed the shot twice. And how do you fight back from that when it just continues to happen to you time and again? Another shot, this time blocked, but it still flights ball, looking rapid, ends up popping it off the top of his Dominus. He wants to get back to it, but it will be sent down to the corner. Well handled on defense, oh, Dapper flips Dapper. by one. And Dapper, the god oh, on the my. 1v1. Sonic's up. I mean, I'm getting this is this is a nostalgic play for me because you know seeing Dapper hit him with the, with the jukes and the dribbles on the offensive side. That is what I love to see from him, Dapper. You know, he's previously been known as one of the best one v one players, and he shows here why he was so confident, and so good in every one v one match. He's definitely evolved from that that play style. But now here he is again, shocked actually with a shot on net. And you can see Sonics, they're starting to feel so comfortable even whenever they're getting barricaded in with a bunch of shots from flight. Yeah, they're pushing past the third at this point. They've won a lot of the boost. Dapper and another shot. This will be Sathews, and Sathews does finish. And Sonics, what feels like a comfortable two-goal lead here in game four. Yeah, and now, I mean, on the other side, they just switched it up. They, now it's Sonics really the ones with an onslaught of shots. Dapper did a great job of forcing a save out there. Sathew with good precision as well on the net to find that corner where nobody can even possibly get a save. And Sonic's looking clean and collected. We don't see any repeats of those weird communicational errors that we did in game one. The flight. It was looking like we might see a different flight in game one, but I feel like I've I said believe. that for the last three series I've watched flight play where they come yeah. out firing and then teams just seem to slowly figure them out over time. And it, I feel like the best thing I can say about this flight team is that they can they can win they're good at winning 50 sometimes and other than that like their transitions are pretty good but they're shooting they're they're shooting if if they score yeah. even one of those this could have been a completely different game four definitely but, uh, but it's, it's just a frustrating it's thing though it's a frustrating yeah. thing because when your shooting isn't on point that as a player it tends to give you more of a reason to get more and more eager to be aggressive on the ball, to push up forward, to get out of line, and to not even communicate as much. Because you're, you're getting so close to goals, you just want to force every shot on. And I think that eagerness tends to come out a lot for flight. Now Sonic's it's under a minute to go, still up by two. They've handled the ball very well, limiting flight to three shots on net. Only putting on six themselves, but that's all that's been needed. And trying to keep the ball close, but Memory just having to use too much to chase it back. Seabass, yeah, one tap, but he doesn't have the boost to get back there. Dapper already down the field. Memory, tough business to handle, and Shock will not get the goal. Memory barely picks up the save. And as flashy as that looked, you got about 10 seconds left to score two. And so oh, it's possible. only so impressive. But Seabass can't find the ball. This next clear will likely do it. Shock. High up in the air, Sonics recover from their loss against Cloud9 with a 3-1 victory against Flight.
Yeah, and that is a relieving win for Sonics because I, after you saw the last series versus Cloud9, I think everybody could see you know, the downfall of Sonics if they let it get to them, if they let their mentality slip up. But here against Flight, they did not even hesitate whatsoever on the defensive side and on the offensive side. Dapper doing some great dribbles. He had the demo plays. He was really the rock of this team this series. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you, Turtle. Dapper was... I was saying Rapid was all over the pitch earlier, but but so was Dapper. He was making plays in every phase of the game, on offense, yeah. on defense, in the midfield. His presence was felt, and this guy has really developed into such a dynamic player in the RLCS. He's he's finally yeah. gotten do it the, all. the old curse, the old CLG curse that he had on him that were, you know, a lot of fans just, they weren't sure about Dapper before. Dapper's always been well-loved. Uh, but like this season, he's just evolved as a player and yeah. it's so fun to watch. And I think he's really found his own sort of play style. You know, he doesn't really try and replicate anybody else. He's got shock to, you know, clutch out a lot of goals and have the, that, that finishing role to clean up a lot of Dapper's mess. And I think that that, that duo alone is really what helps Dapper to shine on, on whatever he does, because he has that confidence knowing that if he makes a mistake or if he can even get a solid flick on that, he's got shock in the back to help him out. Well, Cloud9 are going to continue their journey to stay in the playoffs. Can they do it against Ghost, a rising team in the RLCS? Find out after the break. 